Well, good morning, everyone. Good morning, Tom. Hello, Christian. How are you? I am doing well, and thanks, everybody, for joining this month's Office 365 Productivity Tips May Mediation, which sounds friendlier than I think it's going to be. <laughs> I must admit, you've been coming up with some pretty good words lately that are venturing further and further into the thesaurus, so I'm impressed. So of note, too, this, this is our – so we've been doing these for about three years now, but this is our last – Office 365 Productivity Tips. As of next month, it'll be Microsoft 365 Productivity Tips. It's about time that yeah, you I, I know. the we've motion been, there. We've been slow. Well, we had to make sure that it was going to stick as a name, as a brand. Yeah, yeah. sure. Okay, let's go with that. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, just uh, really quick, we'll just jump into things. Uh, we've got a smaller audience because I think half our, the crowd is still on vacation, but that's all good. I don't know what that vacation thing is, but uh, my name is Christian Buckley. I'm founder and CEO of Collab Talk, um, based here in Lehigh, Utah. You can find my blog at buckleyplanet.com, and I'm a, a you know hopefully a nine time. I'm a, officially I would have been a nine time as of January MVP, uh, but they pushed everything back to mid year, so I'll find out July first if I get renewed. But also well, a regional director. Thank you. And uh, well, that's me, Tom. And this would be me. I am a software engineer at Canby Health Solutions, which is an insurance company in the Pacific Northwest. I'm not a vendor. I'm not selling you anything. And I'm not an MVP. So I'm hoping to rectify that someday. Uh, I have a blog where I blog a lot of these tips that you're seeing called OneMinuteOfficeMagic.com. Feel free to check that out, and you can see these. Actually, it was funny. I was looking at my um, WordPress site, which is what I run that on. Mm -hmm. I think I posted like 340-some-odd tips out there since I started wow. in 2015. Yeah. yeah. A lot of stuff out there. That is. A lot of stuff that's not relevant anymore, but there's a lot of stuff out there. <laughs> yeah, that's always the downside. There's a separate conversation about SEO and cleaning stuff up off that. I mean, what there are still people on older versions and might still find it relevant. But This is true. Yeah. Well, uh, we always like to, uh, since we do these things repeatedly and we are going to do the polls, we don't have a lot of people that are going to vote today. Please vote. Um, but we do keep track of that. And the leaderboard, the last two months, I've taken those events and it tied us up. Tom has been dominating for so long. And uh, so we are, it's just amazing. We've been doing this for a long time and we're tied on two stats and I just moved ahead on overall votes. Do you know how hard it was for me not to say anything when you said, please vote? Because the words for me just got right to the lips and I was able to stifle them and not go with that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I promise as part of my campaign for your votes, I will not tweet. <laughs> okay. All right. Yes. We're All going right. that route. I'll just say that. Got uh, it. <laughs> rules of engagement for these things. Uh, so we're taking turns. So we're sharing 10 tips. Um, we are never sharing the same tips we've shared at one of our webinars before. And in fact, I think Tom, for the most part, we don't share tips that either of us have blogged about yet because we're trying to uh you know win some votes yeah, generally speaking we tend to avoid what the other person has done i know there's been stuff before where i'm like oh hey that's a great one and christian got it first and i won't be using that one so yep <laughs> um so the audience votes after each round and as we always say no hitting below the belt and yet but yet I am trying to turn over a new COVID-related, kinder, gentler thing. So I bought a step stool. So I'm higher to help avoid Excellent. hitting you below the belt due to my lack of height. Straight to the sternum or the throat. That's, that's. Yeah. Five finger death punch here. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, uh, we kind of collect that. We will, uh, we'll try to move through these things very, fairly quickly. Um, and, uh, the goal is always to, uh, I don't know. We've Win. Given up, we've abandoned the try to try to get. Well, yeah. Besides the winning, <laughs> but as far as time wise, the goal is always to be like try to wrap it up at forty five minutes. We've never done that, <laughs> but we're always I didn't even know that was a goal. Yeah, it's a goal. It's a goal. All right. Okay. Let's jump right into things. Let's kick things off with round one. I'll get started. And big news: the new Microsoft Lists app. 
Yay! It's not yet available, so we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> but let's talk about <laughs> leveraging the Cortana scheduler for meetings. <laughs> that was that was very well played, Christian. Yeah, I, I, I'm impressed. <laughs> very <you>. well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and this is a. In the past, we have talked about some things that were announced but not yet available. And I don't know about you, Tom. Like, I, I'm like, I don't want to do that. Like. Unless somebody can go out there and touch it, unless it's starting to roll out, like what's the point? Because if it's delayed or you know, something. So anyway, I want to talk about things that are real, that are tangible. Um, so this is something that I don't know if, uh, if anybody saw this out there, um, but the news out there, I think it was January when they talked about this, um, but is the Cortana scheduler for meetings. And so this is an, an expansion of what's been out there for a while, different tools, um, the uh, free busy, the fine time, that kind of stuff. This is in addition to that. So it's building on that. And also part of Microsoft's rebrand of Cortana. And so you know, Cortana lost in the intelligent devices. Uh, and I won't say their names because they're in the room with me and two of them and they're listening. Uh, Alexa! <laughs> Oh, mine just went oh, off. Yeah, she didn't, she didn't wake <laughs> up here, so that's good. But anyway, um, so this is part of Microsoft's rebrand as that intelligent personal as assistant. And so if you go to and you can leverage now, sign up at calendar.help. It's free. If you have an Office 365 account, then you should be able to sign up and start using it. It's not a replacement for Find Time and Free Busy and some of the other tools. It's just an addition. And what's great about this is that you can, once you have it, you're confirmed within the, the solution, um, then you can sync between calendars, you can use the, uh, you know, the verbal cues um, with Cortana. If you're leveraging that, it can be done from the desktop. You can, you know, as you send an email, I'm gonna just show you some screenshots here very quickly. But anyway, there's multiple ways you can do it and through your mobile device as well. And so how that works is, so first you need to go and sign up and it's just a matter of uh, you know, entering in your Office 365 enabled, your Exchange Online account to confirm and enable that uh, on your service. And I, I'm not sure if there's something that needs to be enabled uh, at the, the, the corporate level, the company level, I don't believe so. If it, it's, it doesn't impact anything in your system um, and, and it should just be if you have a, an exchange online or Office 365 account that enables that. Anyway, from there, you can go in there and start an email and address it to Cortana at calendar.help. And so add that into your, uh, your, your, your memory banks there and then request time off. And you can use natural language. But some of the things that she does out of the box, so setting up focus time, week, weekly one-on-ones, various meetings, uh, and so just put details. Or again, verbally, if you have Cortana, I don't have her enabled on the desktop to listen in, but you can do that by you know, voice command as well. And it's just that simple to go in there and say, hey, book 30 minutes, or hey, can you book some time with Tom on Thursday and it will automatically reach out to Tom and with a calendar invite and say, hey, does this time work? What works best for you? And as Tom responds, it will automatically go and book it within my calendar. That is pretty cool. I have never heard of that. I had never seen that. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm it's, thinking uh, that I might want to give that a shot. Yeah, definitely go take a look. Cool. So uh, let me stop sharing. Delay. Hey, if you can't show anything, I'm pretty delay, much delay. five and zero oh for this delay, one. Delay, delay. <laughs> Awful quiet. He's un unable to unmute himself. I guess I did. <laughs> oh wow! One of these days, I'm going to host the meeting. I'm sure. <laughs> so anyway, I'm assuming that you can see my yes. screen here. Great. Yep. Uh, so what I want to talk about here is for Office files you can now get notifications when you're putting comments into the file. So as many of you may know, uh, when you're using like Excel or Word or PowerPoint, you have the option to be able to put comments in the file, which are great because those comments actually become part of the document. So it's a nice way to have discussions that 
retain the context of what you're working on in the document, especially if it's a document or a file that you're doing collaborative editing on. So in this particular case, to show how I can now get notifications when somebody comments and mentions my name, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm using Excel here as my example. I'll go to review and new comment. And when I do that, let's, come on, get the focus, go, there we go. <laughs> when I do that, I'm gonna get my side comment that allows me to start putting stuff in there. In this case, I'm doing a comment on the uh, notes column or you know, column Q here. And what I do is I put an at symbol in there. And when I put an at symbol in there, it basically gives you a drop down where you can start typing in portions of the name. It'll give you a list of the names that match. In this case, just for the example purposes, because my coworker wasn't available at the time I was doing the images for this, I just went ahead and put my own name in there. <clears throat> put the comment, and then I click the send icon, which is the little you know, arrow that looks like a paper airplane. <clears throat> and then at that point, the comment is saved with the document for all prosperity. Or, you know, this is great. You know, it's going to be out there forever. But the problem is, a lot of times you may say, hey, I have a comment out here. I need to get your input. But the person doesn't know it's there. And if they haven't been part of the editing of this document, eh, they may never see it. Well, now what happens is you end up getting an email that says, hey, this was mentioned or you were mentioned in this particular site or file in this case. And I can go directly to the comment by clicking on the green go to comment button. This really helps you to be able to do collaborative editing better because you don't have to ping the person and say, hey, I'm editing this, I need your input, please go here. Let me put that link in the chat. You can just mention, mention them in the comment. And then once you send that, this is what they're gonna get. So it's an easy way to flag them, bring them into the conversation on the file or the document, and you can get that collaborative effort going without a whole lot of side stuff to make it happen. So this is a really cool feature. If you haven't had a chance to check it out, either just the comments themselves or putting somebody's at name in there in order to get a notification sent to them, you might want to give that a try because it's really going to help you get that uh, collaborative effort going on. I'm going to push out the poll now. And I've got a couple, two comments on this while the poll is okay. going here. Um, the, the first comment is that uh, I, I, this is an extension of a lot of the cross workload collaborative capabilities that you're seeing, being able to push and share information across from Teams into SharePoint or, or uh, you know, into Yammer or uh, you know, from either of those into uh, Outlook and share out in different locations, which is it's exciting to see that capability. The mm. one thing I would like to see though, and you know, something that uh, I'm saying it out loud, neither of us have any control over this, <laughs> obviously, but I would love to be able to create a task or, or have a list uh, you know, in my to-do of, uh, of all comment requests or something where they, they, I get a notification other than just email. There's got to be a way for the intelligent system, it's on the graph, to be picked up and surfaced through to-do and or planner. Yeah, it seems like you could do something like perhaps adding an at to-do in there and it knows that, hey, if you're the person who put that in there, uh, do I need to put something in on your task list or do I need to put something on the task list of the person who I at mentioned in that comment? Or, I see or your you, point. That would even be Even really if you cool. could say in your profile, say, hey, any requests or any comments at mentions of me add to this at mention to-do list. That would be that would be really nice. I'd like that one. Yeah, because then then uh, I mean, think about that. How you use a lot of this? You're in editing a document, a spreadsheet, and um, you, you you might have multiple at mentions of things to go and do, and it's piling up in your Outlook, and it might just more efficient for those that uh, prefer it to appear over in uh, in to do. Well, in all in all the uh, my activity stuff that you can now do, and you can check, you know my focus and, and things like that. I know a lot of times it will go through if you say, okay, give me some suggestions out there. <clears throat> and they'll say, hey, we found these emails that look like you may have action that needs to be taken. 
So they've got something really close, but you can't really drive it explicitly by what you type in. Right. What you're suggesting would be a lot nicer and you can actually count on something working that way on a regular basis. And it, we're, if you've not yet voted, go and vote. I'm going to close it out here in five seconds here. Um, and we'll wrap it up now. Tom, congrats, 68%. Ooh. Wow, wow. Yay. Thank you, everyone. All right. Free donuts. Free donuts. <laughs> free donuts. <laughs> Feel free to uh, supersize on lunch. <laughs> there you go. A huge, <laughs> huge freaking donut there. Okay, so round two. This is something that occasionally when I do tips, I put something out there and it's like, uh, this is really not much of anything. And I put it out because I send it both internal and then external. And this was one of those ones where I thought it was a throwaway tip. And the feedback I was getting from some of my internal people is like, oh my God, I have waited years for this tip. <laughs> like, okay, this is why I put them out here so I don't forget about them. And other people apparently learn from them too. In this particular case, it's creating multiple lines in an Excel cell. Um, we've been doing a migration effort and we had a spreadsheet where we had some comments in a particular column. And I was like, gosh, I can't remember how to get a second line in the cell for my comments because if I hit tab, it goes down or goes over to the next column and the enter key takes me to the next row. How do I get that second line and stay in the same cell? Well, the way you do that is you click or you uh, basically press uh, alt enter and when you hit alt enter voila you get that second line it's a hard-coded line return and that's really it to the tip there's no other explanation to it it's just like yeah you can build out some multi-line text capabilities in an excel cell without having to wait for the wrap to occur wherever you happen to have the the edge of the cell set, this actually gives you control about what starts in each new line. So very simple. A, and this is a great example of, uh, you know, look, Excel has done this for the last 15 plus years, but these oh, yeah. are the kinds of tips that, you know, and people just have no idea mm -hmm. about it. Like I, me. <laughs> I, I love that. Well, and we've done this from time to time where we share some really old stuff. It's not all just about the new. The new stuff is exciting. But it's, it's good to go back and, and uh, capture this. Yeah, this is something I've used for many, many years and rely on. Well, and a lot of times we talk about when we present this, especially when we present live, <clears throat> we'll say, you know, we don't expect every tip that we do to resonate with everybody. But if there's two or three tips that you walk away with, they can impact your work environment to a very significant degree because, wow, I didn't know that. This is one of those ones I believe that if you've not known about this, it, this can make a huge impact in how you work with Excel files and you enter data in cells. So here it is, have fun and see if it works. Excellent. And you're able to see my round two. Mm -hmm. Excellent, all right. So this is, uh, come on forward, forward. There we go. Um, creating digital badges in Microsoft Teams. I'm a big fan of, uh, this is the first of two apps that I'm going to talk about today. Um, I'm a huge fan of the, uh, uh, the gamification for engagement and adoption tools and techniques. So if you are in an organization that uh, you know, utilizes a lot of these kinds of tools, uh, this is really cool what they, Microsoft has announced. So they had a slew of apps and things that they announced all at once and and some of the pieces that have been out there this one is actually built by this third party uh, vendor what's cool about this however is that you can use it within teams and just lives and breathes inside of teams and nothing more but you actually have the ability um, to extend and take these badges that are you're rewarded you can make some of them you know a bit more broadly available as people finish, like, uh, for example, if they've gone through, uh, if you have you know, internal training courses and they've completed those, 
uh, and then you can kind of have badges for each stage or who's completed the entire program for people that have hit their one year, five year mark, 10 year mark, those kinds of things. But you can also create something that's a little more special. If you, you go and create um, like an internal advocacy program or champion uh, program and people even having left the organization can still have badges that are portable. They can have it on their LinkedIn profile. They could have it elsewhere. So there's a lot that you can do and to design a program. And again, have it just within Teams or uh, have something that's extendable um, outside of the, the Microsoft Teams world. So it's just a really powerful tool and how it looks inside of uh, your Teams environment. Again, you have those recognition, things that you can measure against. You can create these in a way that allows anybody to distribute them. You can have it manager or leadership team only that can do this level of recognition. So you have a lot of options on how you want to go and build that. Uh, but it's a great adoption tool uh, if it's something that you're interested in. And uh, uh, that's it. There's the link to read more on it and go get started. So you can actually go and, and take a look today and figure out if you own your environment, how to get started. So two things on that. <clears throat> One is I tried to go out to YouTube and get that very old repeatable video of the Badgers, comic Badgers, just going Badger, 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 Badger. <laughs> I couldn't find it, didn't make sense. The second one is I'm sitting here going, Honey Badger don't care, Honey Badger don't give up, you know, <laughs> that whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this is cool. I, I know that uh, I'm probably not as big a fan as badge, of badges as you are, but I know that that actually gives people uh, some options to be able to do that. And depending on, you know, how you're wired and how you like to work and how you like to recognize people, that would be a really cool thing. Yeah, there's some organizations that are just, they're, they're tailored that way. I like, I've worked in, uh, in organizations that are very sales centric and they thrived on leaderboards and the badging and that kind of recognition it was a it was a huge part of the culture and so for those organizations that are kind of leaderboard uh, that kind of engagement you know driven having these kinds of things to be able to tailor it to your specific programs is is pretty amazing of course I, I worked for back when I worked for the phone company and we didn't have the digital versions of these things but each of the different divisions they had divisional awards and I I remember going to work there and it was like the third company that I worked for in my young career. And, and I'm just like, it was very foreign to me. I'm like, what is all this fluff? What is the, the purpose <laughs> of this stuff? And, you know, for people that were, uh, you know, for the phone company and your know, career and see like shelves of recognition for successful go to market, Microsoft had that, you know, for if you were part of the, the product team and went to market with a new product, you get these little crystal statues and right. um, I, I think they've done away with a lot of that. You still get it for major milestones of employment there, but anyway, just something that you can do digitally. And, and one other thing I'll just bring up as a side note, um, Hal in the chat mentioned that um, for the links, especially you tend to post links of, for more information, you might want to go here. We should probably uh, have those like sitting to the side on Notepad or something. And when we have a link like that, go ahead and put it in the chat. Yeah. So that people can click on the chat to get there and check it out instead of having to download the slides to get there in the whole nine yards. So that's true. Good, good point there. <clears throat> yep. All right. So with the poll, Tom, you win again. Congratulations. More donuts. Yeah. More <laughs> donuts for Tom. All right. Let's jump into round three. We might hit the 45 minute mark today, Tom. I'm, I'm impressed. You're, you're being very concise here. Yeah, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, it's <laughs> worry. Although I, I, I have considered going back and doing a historical study at who's taken more time since we do the timestamps on the links. I am, I am going to, I'm <laughs> going to say hands down, that would be me that I've taken less time. No, it, the, it, the, the problem why it's inaccurate is because of this kind of dialogue right now, you know, at the end. <laughs> exactly. Remember that one? Yeah, do, that, do it again. That would be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. 
For, for those of you who don't know that sound, <laughs> we presented live at last year's SharePoint conference and we had 20 tips in 60 minutes. So we had like five minutes a tip or whatever it was. It's like, okay, so every time we started a tip, we'd start the clock and we had that particular air horn button. And if the person got to the end and they weren't done, we got to hit the button. And I think I hit the button more than me. Well, I hit the button more legally than yeah, you right. did. I that's would true. start talking. He'd hit the button right away and throw me <laughs> off. Yeah, that well, was. Well, but yeah, but I guess it, you're loose on the rules if I didn't like something that you said because it was a good tip or something, you know. Loose in the yeah. rules. We didn't even have a time competition going until I got there and you said, oh, by the way, we're going to be grading this one. Yes. <laughs> Tom, you got to be ready to go. You got to okay. be ready to fire okay. off of, you know, all right. I'm just saying. <laughs> okay, round three, go, go, go. All right. okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> really cool announcement around this is back in January um, around the custom results pages for Microsoft Search. So it's a SharePoint tip. Um, it's really awesome if you, this has been a request for a long time. It's for SharePoint Online specifically, but you can go in and customize the results and share that out there uh, as, a, a, as a, a list. And it's, it's cool because you can share it as a tab within Teams as well. So if you want, if you know that there's a lot of content that's, being, that's happening around a certain project or, you know, or hashtag or some kind of searchable term, you know a lot of people are going and look, looking for, but you want to tailor the results, make sure that certain uh, information is available in the, in the, the search card the result card around that. So you go and create that custom search experience uh, and then uh, build that in as a, a search result that you can have as a link or as a tab. And so to go in and create that, to configure that, it's really as sim simple as going in, um, browsing to the site where you wanna create that under site collection settings and search settings uh, and send queries to a custom results page provide the URL, and then modify that view. So it's just another uh, of the, and I'm doing air quotes here, experiences that you can create for your users to give them a very tailored experience uh, for common search results. And there's a great, uh, VESA does a great video um, that walks through this process. This came through the community PNP, the Patterns and Practices um, organization. So I, I think this was a, a community initiated versus a Microsoft initiated uh, development. Uh, and so the, the components in the article are, uh, you, know, you could go check stuff out um, via uh, you know, GitHub and, and elsewhere, um, read more about it, but this is something that uh, is very exciting that you should be, if you're using SharePoint Online, be able to go and do today, nothing, uh, not a lot to set up on the back end to, to enable this. That's cool. We'll, <clears throat> we'll probably be looking at this one more internally because uh, I know we've wanted to do some additional stuff with search and I know they've been, you know, on the roadmap for different enhancements to search, but we didn't seem to see them. Uh, just recently, I think we are now seeing the new enhanced search. So I think we may start playing with this one a little That's bit. That's always the difficulty. That's a great point is, uh, it, you know, while this was announced in January and started rolling out, um, do go in and verify that, you know, your tenant is, it's, right. it's supported and available. Um, that's why I, I, I've had this request. It'll never be met, but, but Microsoft, I've, I've provided this. I said, I would love when we hear about features, I'd almost like to see from the roadmap site, to, to somehow get a personalized view of the roadmap based on what's available in my tenant. That would be cool. Little color indicator or something to, to, to know that, you know, hey, I can get excited about this because it's actually available. But yeah, that, that'll never happen. <laughs> yeah, and especially since like in our case, we're on the semi-annual thing. So I've got a huge list of, of things out in my task list of, hey, I want to, I want to, you know, blog on this and this and this and this yep. and this because it was supposed to be rolled out the end of February. Yeah, but not to us because we have a few more months to wait. So, well, so I have even for the cool features that for these uh, monthly webinars. So I have my v.next uh, version of my PowerPoint and it has um, a, a section where I put dates of when things were announced 
for me to go check on to see if it's available yet. Cause they'll say, Hey, available this summer. They like, yeah, summer rolls around what actually happened with it. So I don't lose sight of features that get announced months before they're available. And then I forget about them. Yeah. What I end up doing is I have um, reminders for every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to go out and look at message center. Uh, yeah. And so any of the message center features that I haven't read yet, cause they're all bold. Uh, I'll go ahead and call that up. And if it's something that I think I want to be able to do some, you know, tip writing on, I'll go ahead and there's an option to share this with an email address. I'll put my own email address in there, let it come into my mailbox. And then what I'll do at that point is I'll usually pull it down into the task list. It'll pop up and it'll say, this should be out by mid July. And so I'll like pick July 15th or July 30th as a due date. And that way it's going to pop up in my task list as something that should be out there. Rarely does it ever meet that date, but I can at least go out and check and say, Oh yeah, that's right. That feature was coming out. Do we have it in our tenant yet? So that's a good way that I use to remind myself of what's going on. And I, and I should plug, put in a plug too for Tom, for your other day job, the other, other day job uh, that of the, uh, uh, the updates that you do with Jennifer. Um, yes. And, and so where you're going through a lot of these announcements that are coming out, I'm sure you guys talk about that too, like what's available today versus future, but the things that are announced. Yeah, that's our Office 365 Pulse, which is now Microsoft 365 Pulse roadmap webcast that Jennifer Mason, Adam uh, Oaks, uh, now Tamara Bredemus and myself do on a weekly basis. And Jennifer goes out and pulls data and then does some magic incantations to get a spreadsheet that says, okay, these are all the things that are in development. These are all the things that are rolling out. These are all the things that are in production, which means you should have them. And then here are the things that have been canceled off the roadmap. Right. And we do that on a weekly basis and it gets posted out to YouTube. And uh, that is a really good way to help me also see, hey, these things are coming up and I usually learn about it there before it actually comes down and hits message center, but at least I'm aware of what it is. I know that it's coming. Yep. Uh, the roadmap doesn't tell you when it's coming necessarily. It'll go, oh, Q2 2020. I'm like, well, that's a wide range <laughs> and it may not hit until Q4 or it may say, hey, this is going to be ready in Q3 2020 and it hits your tenant today. So it's not necessarily great for timing, but it helps in terms of knowing what's coming. So yep. we have fun with that one. <clears throat> if this tip really caught me off guard because I hadn't seen it in the roadmap. I hadn't seen it in, I think I first saw it in Message Center. And it was like, it's not like, oh, this is coming. It's like, hey, look what's out here now. I'm like, whoa, okay. Uh, in Microsoft Stream, you can now do short screen capture videos from within Stream, meaning you don't have to use a tool like Snagit or something like that. Uh, I think this is like really, really cool because it just eliminates the need for you to have to work with two or three different types of software to get to where you want to have a short little training video on, hey, here's how you do X, Y, Z. So in order to make this happen, you go out to Microsoft Stream, and to start the screen capture session, you should see a new option up at the top. Well, you'll see the option at the top that's always been there, create. But down at the bottom, you should have one that says record screen. So what you do is you go ahead and select that. Gives you the yellow bar of, you know, yeah, privacy, blah, blah, blah. You know, yeah, privacy, copyright, all those good things. Don't do anything you shouldn't do. <clears throat> and then what you do is you click the record button, which is the one with the little red dot in it. Once you do that, it gives you the option, much like Christian and I have here in our Zoom webcast, to say, do you want to share your entire screen? Do you want to just share a particular application that you have open? Or do you just want to share a particular tab that you have open in Microsoft Edge? So you go ahead and select one of those, whatever ends up working for you. And when you click on share, it starts the screen recording at that point. Now you can pause if you need to. Uh, obviously, it's going to catch your voice as you're talking this through. So if you kind of have an idea of where you want to go or you've written up your script on the side, 
again, you've got 15 minutes to do this and it's going to be captured directly within stream, which is awesome. Once you're done with everything, you go ahead and click next, which is the equivalent of saying finished. And it comes up and says, do you want to record again? You know, maybe it was one of those ones where, up oh, outtake, we're not keeping that one. Let's start over again. Or if you like everything, you're good with it, you can go ahead and click upload to stream. And when you do that, it launches the side panel that gives you a chance to type in the name of the screen recording, any description, what the video language is going to be. And then you can either say, hey, I want to give this to everybody in the company, or you can then go in, you can give it to everybody in the company, or once you actually create this video, you can go into stream and expand out your regular panels, which say what group do I want it to go into, what channel do I want it to go into, stuff like that. So this to me is an awesome improvement in stream because again, there's a lot of times, and maybe it's not even a training video, maybe it's like, hey, one of my customers is having a problem with something and it would be really helpful if I could just do a quick one minute screen share of, hey, you do this, you do this, you do this, and then put it out there and let them be able to look at it. And that can then be leveraged for other people. They've got the same questions. So if you are at all in a role where you need to be able to share information with people based on, you know, here's what I do to make this happen, this is an awesome, awesome update and stream. So Tom, I'm going to, I'm going to launch the poll on this. I'll get a couple of questions. One, are you aware if there, is there a little bit of a, a, of a buffer around the audio for each of the segments? Cause I could see if you just start, you know, hit play, start recording, it, it might have some, you know, very sharp, abrupt uh, cutovers between each of the clips with your, your audio. It's, when yeah, when I was testing, I didn't find that. Okay, it seemed to be pretty much real time of what you're seeing and what I'm saying are synced up, and they don't end up, you know, cutting in and out or anything like that. I was I was impressed with the quality of what you ended up getting in that. Okay, that's great. Yeah, the other thing I was just going to say that is about a month ago I reached out to somebody I worked with a few years back because we were using some. It wasn't free, but it was a super inexpensive. Um, a, a, tool to do exactly this. It was, mm -hmm. we used to create these very quick and dirty, you know, like demo type things, which are screen captures and with audio over the top of it. And we used this other third party tool and couldn't remember what it was or find what it, what it was. And then here's this capability that, that came out when it was announced. And I'm like, that's essentially what I was looking for. So, well, and again, what got me about this is to me, you know, you see all the team updates. Oh, yeah, we're going to get nine by nine or, you know, three by three. We're going to get the Brady Bunch view. And to me, this would have been like right up there with, oh, this should have had a lot of lead time and a lot of notice. And it just kind of went, poof, here I am. Yep. So <clears throat> never can tell. Well, that, Tom, you, you won that round. And so you've won the event. Congratulations. Okay, now we're going to rub it in. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and go to my round four start. This is something that uh, Sandra Mahan actually brought to my attention uh, a couple weeks ago because she's starting to use Outlook on the web more than the actual Outlook client. And one of the things that she found was that when you're calling up an email that's got an attachment, Outlook on the web does some really cool things in how it's going to display the attachment in addition to also displaying the email. And in many cases, you may think, hey, you know, here's an email. All it is is a carrier for the attachment because I'm not sharing like I really should. I'm emailing attachments around. But there's other times when there's a lot of information in the email that pertains to the attachment and then you're like opening the attachment. And if you don't have two screens, you're going back and forth between attachment, go back to the email to read what's going on, go back to the attachment, back and forth. What happens in Outlook on the web is if you open that email, it can open in the preview pane over here on the right-hand side. But then when you open the attachment, what it will do is it will actually show you in a view-only mode because it's using the browser there, what actually the attachment looks like on the left side while keeping the email open on the right side. 
Again, that, if you that have looks like to a really it, important spreadsheet, Tom. It is really important. Let me tell you, yeah, the, the bees were really upset with this A spreadsheet. That's all I can say. It seems very <laughs> one-sided. I, <yeah. clears throat> yes. <laughs> Importance, eh, it's, a, it's a subjective thing. What can I say? <laughs> Made sense at the time. Um, but yeah, this is really cool. And if you are looking at this and you go, you know, I really don't see or need to see the email. Uh, I want to have more room to actually display the file. You see up in the upper right hand corner, you've got an option for hiding the email. So that then expands out and lets the um, spreadsheet take up the entire screen. And it changes that link to say show email so you can go back and forth, toggle back and forth to get there. So there are just some really cool things that they're doing in Outlook on the web that makes it even more of a situation of saying, gosh, do I really want to continue to use the client? Because there's some features that are showing up on the web that may never make it to the client, but they're features that really can change the way that you work with your email and get some really cool things. I will mention that there will probably be more email tips along this line that are coming up. Um, especially if you have like an E5 license, there's some really cool stuff that comes up, but we'll deal with that in a later episode. Yeah, it's uh, the other important thing too is just uh, of Microsoft is has figured out the importance of in context collaboration. Mm -hmm. And so being able to, rather than having, as you said, toggle between different applications and open up to view, do that, and realize that, that is, those are the ways that you kill productivity. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's a, that's a really cool tool. Yeah. Let me share. Uh, so here's one. This is a, another in-context suggestion uh, or tip. Creating tabs in team chats. Ooh. And so I don't know if you knew you could do this. I was so, not aware of this. Right. So we're all familiar with you go in and you create a team. You have the channels across the channels. You have all the tabs over on the right side. You add a new tab. You click on the plus mark. You can add various apps and services or websites or PowerPoint pages or SharePoint, uh, uh, you know, search results pages, whatever you want there. But the, the, this is an important thing. It's the second paragraph there. Tabs that are in channels, they can be seen by everybody who has access to that, that channel. So if, you're, if it's a public channel, then everybody who has access to the team can see all the data in those tabs. Unless, of course, it's a view of like a SharePoint site with restricted permissions, of course, where you have to have the elevator permissions to be able to get into that site. Um, but... There, but tabs in chats can only be seen by members of the of the of the chat. It's interesting. I, I there's a conversations I'm sure has been repeated in other organizations. We're having this about um, there was a question that came up in another conversation around um, do I go in and create a private channel? Should mm -hmm. I create a a reduced permissions uh, a SharePoint list and only give access to those people if I I've got you know, 200 people that are a member of this team in my organization, but I, I really only want to share this with five people. What's the best way to go and do that? Well, one way that you can control that, have that more granular control is create a chat for those five people. Or in my example here, actually, if I click the next link here. <laughs> um, so if I go into that chat, so here it's just Greg and I having a conversation. We're talking about some of the community activities and things that are going on. Um, Greg is the president of the Dynamics user group. Formerly, he was the president of the SharePoint user group here in Utah. And, uh, and uh, apparently being president of two user groups was too much for him. So <laughs> he just, uh, you know, just had to reduce his, his effort there. No. Uh, so it, it's just as simple as going and selecting the plus mark there. Um, so in this example, um, so it opens up that, that standard experience that we're used to. You can find that app in this case, I just want to share a website. I insert that blog post that I want to collaborate with them on. And now, he and I can collaborate on these different types sites or, or these other, this other information. I can have that, uh, that, that secure, maybe just Greg and I have access to a SharePoint list 
that you know, I've reduced the permissions so that just he and I can have a personnel discussion, whatever that is, but you can have that added granular control and security and just have these tabs enabled and only Greg and I can see and discuss what is shared via these tabs. So that was something that, I mean, I just, I, I read about this like three, four weeks ago. I didn't realize uh, that you could go and do that separately. I just never noticed it. I just assumed that the tabs that I was seeing in the chat was the same that was in the channel, but no, they are different. Yeah, this, <clears throat> my, my, my little mind here is seeing her going, exploded because like today um my coworker, she was like okay so i'm really going to try to use the team chat that we have open um more than the skype chat for ims I'm like, mm -hmm. okay that's fine <clears throat> the fact that we can also start putting some tabs on there for the things that her and i collaborate on is a little mind-blowing plus i really like this as an option that isn't private channels in a team mm -hmm. because the permissions on that thing still scare me to death. <laughs> you know, and the fact that, yeah. oh, I can create one and you won't know it, even though I'm the owner of the, like, ah! <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was my thought exactly too, is that it's, uh, when they announced the private channels, I was against that for, because if you have experience with managing permissions in SharePoint and the historical view, even though things have changed a bit, it still made me nervous. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and while I've relaxed a little bit on that, but for a lot of the things that you need to do when you're fretting about, do I go create a whole channel and maybe there's a provisioning process even for, you know, certainly creating a new team, but even channels within that team, um, and maybe that's locked down. But you as an individual, I mean, you're not locked down in, uh, in what you can do in those one-on-one -on -one chats and what right. you might want to share. And so it's just... It just gives you that control. And didn't they just recently increase the number of people you can have in a chat to like 250? Yes. Yeah. So, I mean, you can have a pseudo team now that is nothing more than a chat, and you're going to have a whole lot of the functionality with not a lot of the overhead anymore. So. And I think one of the concerns, too, was that, you know, the, the idea of creating a team or a channel, it's a much more permanent feeling activity right sometimes you're like look i just want to have this conversation and we just need these 10 people these 30 people as part of this project team I don't, we don't need a whole channel and to go bog down the system this is just much more focused exactly. and so a chat is the great way of doing that and then you still have all the abilities to use um bots and and everything else um and on all the other uh, tabs and services. So yeah, this is really cool. I like this one. I'm I'm going to be talking to my coworker as soon as I get off this call yeah. Yeah. <laughs> on cool. this particular one. Definitely go play with that. Well, end the poll. So I took that round eighty three percent. So as well, you should have. <laughs> and let's get into the final round. Do, do, do. Round five. So here's the other app that I mentioned. Again, I'm, I'm big on the adoption engagement capabilities, but it's just another tool. Again, if your corporate culture is such where this is a fit, it's not for everybody, but is the incentives app. And so this is again, um, you know, in, in a sales type organization, this makes great sense where different types of deals where sales that were done over a certain dollar amount or certain number of, of a certain, if you've got multiple products that have been sold where you could give points for those things. I've seen organizations that have used incentives around, uh, you know, giving campaign type activities, hours worked, dollars raised, things like that, where you can recognize people in, internally um, for those activities, for, you know, completion of training hours, for, you know, uh, uh, support calls received or, or resolved. I mean, different things like that, depending on your organization. Operations and sales organizations, uh, it's probably more common. But it's a, this is a, just another tool. It's a Power Apps template that can track all of those measurements so that the management team, the leadership team can then go and, and these can be things that are, you know, recognition that are given by peers, um, but to still go back, it's just, it's a great measurement of looking at uh, the success 
of a project team or of individuals within an organization that are recognized by the peers. It should never be the only measurement, of course, but it's an additional measurement by which you can look and see, well, are these people are on people on my team? Like I've historically, I've run project management business analyst teams. And I always like to see like, are, is the general populace, uh, the, the broader organization, are they getting value, seeing value out of the community wide activities that my, uh, my direct employees uh, we're, we're receiving. So to be able to see this kind of information and get this, this feedback is, uh, you know, just a really cool tool. Yeah, this so, is cool. So there's, uh, if it goes forward, yeah, there's the animation here that you can see out on the, the, the link, which is on the la the next page. But, um, so you can establish what those activities are, set up the points, um, what the, the path is to complete those, to receive all of those, um, you can set your know, time limits on each of those different activities. So you, again, you have that a lot of granular control over how people can go and earn those things. And then there's the app version of this. You can track it within Teams, you know, online or in the desktop application and kind of keep track of the progress. So this is something especially uh, to look at, you know, create rewards like, hey, who can... Uh, you know, sell the most of this item in the next 30 days and we'll win, you know, a, a, whatever it is, you know, a, a cash prize or some other just recognition. Um, so, or hey, use this in combination with the badges, if that's important. Yeah. <laughs> More uh, badges. Anyway, it's a, cool. uh, there are a lot of people that would go in and, and build something like this and track it manually. Now you have something that's automated that can go and, capture these kinds of programs, these incentives, and, uh, and allow others to uh, take advantage of that within the organization and report back. Very cool. Something we <clears throat> might definitely want to look at because I know that we've got kind of a, rec a rewards and recognition program right now that we you know, rolled our own, and it was like SharePoint in the story of the mutant frog when I dressed in a frog <laughs> outfit to yeah. present. Uh, well, the typical spreadsheet that everybody has. Exactly, it, exactly. It, it's, there's something to say about making it visible. It's mm -hmm. again, it's the leaderboard kind of thing. And some organizations, some cultures, they don't like that. They say, I, we don't want that kind of competition. Right, right. I, I'm of the belief that <coughs> some degree of competition is healthy. Yep, I would go with you on that one. So this is something that I had heard that was coming for quite some time. And it finally showed up, and this is awesome, yep. in the fact that they now have stock photos for SharePoint online pages. Yay. And uh, PowerPoint so, and Word. And true, and true. I'm glad to see that it came over here. It was over in the office side um, not too long ago, so it's also more recently. Yeah. So basically what this means is that instead of having people go out to, you know, images online and searching and pulling in things that may be, uh, you know, copyright protected and you put your legal liability or you've got people coming to you going, do we have a library of stock photos that we can use? You're like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> well, Bob purchased them. How come Sally can't use them? Um, now when you're doing, and in this particular example, I'm using SharePoint pages, when you're doing an image web part, you have the option now to select stock images that Microsoft has provided as part of that. So in this particular case, I've got a page and I'm going to go ahead and add a web part and it'll be the image web part. And let me go there. So now in the list of things you can search from like OneDrive or another site, or you upload it, you now have the image to do stock or the option to do stock images. And what you can do is it'll give you like some images just to look at when you first go out there. They also have the ability to click on some basic uh, general concepts like computer, celebration, light, whatever. Or you can actually do search. So I could type in cat or, you know, Excel or, you know, people working together type thing and get images that would fit that particular um, scenario. But in this particular case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and pick the cat video here that we have in the second row because he looks ferocious there. And then when I click insert at the bottom of the screen, <clears throat> it slams that image right into the image web part. And while it looks really large here, I can also use the uh, 
image toolbar, which was something I covered in a recent tip one or two months ago, I think, where I can either crop the photo from within here, I can justify it left or right, I can move the focus left or right, so I can make this look a lot smaller for what the page is. I don't have to go with this huge photo that completely blows my page proportions out. But again, I don't have to go try to find them somewhere. I don't have to then download them to my computer, turn around and upload them back up, stand the chance of putting it in some presentation that goes public, but there was some sort of a copyright thing that you weren't aware of, and then your company gets sued and you get fired and life's not wonderful. This takes all that out of the mix. So if you're using a lot of, um, or if you're creating a lot of pages and you wanna be able to use photos and you want something that looks real professional, definitely check out the stock photos because it's free, it's available, it's really a no brainer and you're probably gonna get much better options just I'll say right out of the box than you would if you had to go try to figure it out yourself and figure out where to get those. So I think this is really cool. A you know, lot of hey, people in our company was very happy about this. One. Hey Tom, can, do you know, can you modify that list the search of the different options where you could pull from? And I don't know that stock photos, of course, number one, can you modify that and put other links like up, uh, what is it? Unsplash on there as another resource. Not, can you kind of hard code that, that in? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, at but sheer I point, I guess you could break something somewhere to get in yeah. there and do that, but I don't know if it was an option that you came across. No, I didn't, but I would highly suggest going to uservoice.sharepoint.com and yeah. it, an option no, to do that. <laughs> throw that out there to folks that are fans of this, uh, this tip is add Unsplash, which are free images, so, uh, you know, the community-driven, and so just a lot of... Uh, Folks out there, they just ask for attribution of anything that's used publicly. Um, but for internal usage, I mean, there's nothing that you need to do with some beautiful high def uh, uh, images on that site. Yeah, I'm so. sure after about six months of the stock photo thing, you're going to go, oh, another page using that cat right, photo. Right. <laughs> Instead of that, of the group photo that the SharePoint you know, is known for. Yes. Well, I'm going to wrap up the poll here. Um, so, Tom, you got that one. So, Tom, uh, congrats on that. Let me um, grab the share back from you, and we'll wrap things up. Is here. We're at the end. So, the overall winner, Tomas. Tom, congrats. Bum, bum, bum. If, for those, wait. if you uh, hopefully you can join us our next one, we're going to be back on for the June Jam. Jam, How we never like use that. jam? I, uh, well, we were trying to go with conflict-related terms for the longest time. Yeah, but I could like jam this down your throat type thing. <laughs> Whoa! That's what I was thinking. Like, wow! It, it could be aggressive. It could be violent. It could be you know. It, wow! It, you went there. <laughs> <laughs> we were all thinking it. Come on. No, but you can go and register now, and you see that. Hey, look at the URL, the M365Jam. I like that, actually. So it's that been changed. So. <laughs> and of course, uh, the, we'll make the slides available. I'll have this tonight or tomorrow. I should have the recording out on uh, the tube of views, and uh, <laughs> I'll have the blog post up. But, of course, you can go, and if you go and visit my blog, at the top in the navigation, there is the productivity tips. That is the catalog of every one of these sessions that Tom and I've done over the last three, three and a half years, however long it's been. And so you can get all the recordings. And then something that I do with each blog post, if you've not visited the site, is I do timestamps for each one of those. So you can get the slide share slides and download those. You can uh, jump to a specific tip within the video so you don't have to watch the entire hour again. You can jump right to the spot. Uh, now that I already ran this week, I will say Christian does a lot of work on this and it really shows. I mean, it's a great resource. <clears throat> I wouldn't have said that if we were still voting because that might have pushed people <laughs> out we're done. Yeah, I'll, I'll go uh, ahead and give you the I'm kudos on this, that one. This little clip of the recording at the beginning of next month. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, I haven't now thought that one through. <laughs> like a, a recap of what happened. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, I'll just put all the negative comments that you say, you know, on there. Make it so this, 
<laughs> so this is like the uh, the shows where they're previously on Lucifer. <laughs> you get that 30 second snippet of everything that's happened in the previous episodes. I like that. It, uh, what's funny though is Tom is that when you and I have done that, when we've not checked the arrogance, it's never worked out. Like it's gone the opposite <laughs> each time. So try to, humility is good. Yeah, Humility is good, so long as you win. <laughs> That's right. Again, that'll be in the clips for next week, everyone. I bet it will be. <laughs> all right, well, thanks, everybody. Thanks again, thanks, Tom. All. And, uh, and uh, again, everything will be online somewhere sometime. Sounds great. <laughs> Bye, everyone.